he loves us so. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Did you know that God is jealous for you? That God wants you to live a good life within him because he is good and that his goodness doesn't come from you or come from your own strength but it's a goodness that he will use to take care of you. I find that we often strive to do good works and to be our best and to forget about God really and all of that because you could do everything right but you understand God is jealous for you. He wants to do the he wants to be the one that brings the goodness in your life, not through striving but through faith in him. He wants to bless the works of your hand. He wants to take care of your life and be your provider, your one true love, your all in all. Have you really taken that into account in your life? Have you really given God the time? You say all things happen for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. And, you know, we want the good, but do we know how to love God? Do we know what that means? Or do we just kind of have, um, could you love somebody from a distance? Maybe, but it's not a relationship of love. When we really love somebody, we do we we do what they ask us to do or what they how they ask us to love them um and and one must wonder what god how did god ask us to love him what is the depth of that love what are the mysteries of love in god uh he said this is the commandment love god and love your neighbor love god with all your heart all your soul all your mind and love your neighbor as you love yourself um, do we do these things? Do we go deeply in depth of love for God and, and love him with all our heart, all our soul? Or do we put other things before God? Do we put the music before God? Do we put the religion before God? Do we put the food before God? Do we put the time that, that you spend with others before God? Do you put the time in front of the computer before God? Do you put the work before God? Do you put the profession before God? Do you put the money before God? Do you go astray from what God is calling you to do? Do you put the magical practices before God? Do you put other gods before the Most High God? We must be called according to his purposes. What are his purposes for us? To live a quiet and peaceful life before God. To be prospered. And to have a future. But to, to help the poor really. To take care of the broken hearted. To heal the sick. To set the captive free. To deal with the orphan and the widow to take care of the fatherless. When I said we really let God use you and put it not as a happenstance, so somebody happened, you happened to come across somebody that needed help, or you know, when I said you go out of your way to do something for God, make a plan to put God first in your day, say, I have to do this for God, and then whatever else happens, happens. That when last you spend time with God, who do you know that, that you say you love them that in a relationship with and you give them 15 minutes of your time, five minutes a day of prayer and you say, well, ah, yes, God, I pray to God. You know, I pray, but do you spend time with God? Do you know what his will for you is? Does he talk to you on the daily? Are you his favorite child? The favorite child and the parent, they spend a lot of time together. They, always going to check for each other, spend long hours long on the phone call. Do you know God as a father? Do you know where God lives? Do you know where his secret home, his secret habitation is? 
get to know the rock of ages because he is jealous for you he wants you and he doesn't want to share you with anybody else he doesn't want to share your time he doesn't want to share your future he don't want to give you even your future because he wants that for himself because he knows that he could do abundantly with your life for you for your own purposes he will advance he knows the things in your heart that you want and he could do it way better than you could ever do it or anybody else who's given you those false promises say they could bless you with no God can bless you so much more than you could bless yourself or any blessing in this world could bless you hold out your hands to God for your portion but if you don't do it you won't get it he, he said it like this um, nobody put new wine in an old wine skin or they don't mingle a good garment with old fabric he doesn't want to he doesn't want to bless you along with the old blessings that you find for yourself he, he said give up all your wick, your wick, wicked blessings and come and get a good portion he wants to give, he wants to give you your full portion not half his portion and half your portion. So throw out the old things and let God fill you with the new blessing, the real blessing, the holy blessing, the gift of a future and a sound mind. He free from so, so a comprehensive blessing. From from top go down, so your mind to your heart, to your emotions, to your health to your finances, to your relationships. God wants to deal with all of it, not some of it. Give him all of it, and he will sort you out when you surrender it all to him. He cannot. He's not going, he, he's not going to give you his the portion if you're going to hold on to the old things, because the old things ruin the good portion that God has. Take it and run with it. Take God and run with him. Take God and get lost away. Go off on a journey with God. Go off on a lover's journey with God. Take a vacation with God. That's love. That's, a rela- that's, that's love. That's deep, deep, deeper relationship. Have, have a real relationship, not a passing relationship. Some people treat God like a, a window a drive through window where they go and they get their little fast food and then they go. But you're really not taking much of anything from God if you don't spend the time as a child would with their parents and they tell them the everything that they not a teenager but a child, not an insolent, but a, a humble, loving, open, innocent child with God telling him, taking all that you have Everything that you learn, everything that you see, find, and encounter, you take it to the Father and ask Him. Say, God, Dad, what is this? What is this thing? What have I seen here? What is, what is this mystery of mysteries? I don't understand the word. God, I hurt my hand. God, I hurt my, my toe. God, why is it? What is this inside of me that I'm feeling? Why does that person make me feel like that? So it's how to talk to God as your Father. Give him your heart. Write him a story. Give him your, your whole book to rewrite. God is love. God is unconditional love. God is, is a love, a renegade love, a love that would never turn away from you, a love that has no, no reasons except that it will love you no matter what and he's not going to mix his love with the conditional love that you have assigned to God so you let go of that conditional love and repent of it repent of all the things where you have conditioned yourself to and let God openly love you and be a proud and open and honest about the love God has for you and how he changes your life when you touch, encounter, and commune with the love of Jesus Christ. How does a bride feel about her husband? How should we, the church of God, his chosen ones, feel about our God? 
Have you ever looked in the face of a bride on her wedding day? It's, it's beauty, it's shining love, love, love for the groom. It's so amazing. And then, do we feel like that for God? Do we look, do you have an admiration beyond for God who loves you? Do you know him, to love him like that? Are you, are you anticipating your, a reunion with God? How does a mother love her child? How does a father love his children? Is it that deep of a relationship that you would do anything for God just for the love of God? Or is it for the love of money that you work in this world? Do you actually look at, uh, assess your behaviors and see, well, what, why do I do the things I do? Am I trying to make money to provide for myself? Or am I trying to love God because he provides for me? I, mean, I, I say honestly, look at your behaviors and ask yourself for the truth. Do you, do, do you live out to the love of God or the love of money? Imagine how that makes how that makes that, that God understands you, He knows your relationship with Him, and could you believe it that you treat God as a, a side of something set that you've just thrown away really? Why have you forsaken your first love? That life that you had with God that that you always had and you just let it go for the things of this world, for the pleasures of this life that betray you, always betray you, always hurt you, relationships that always, that people who gossip about you, people who hate you secretly, who plot evil against you, people who don't love you but want to take your money, sell you all kinds of stuff, who set up parties, to get you drunk, to take more of your money, then they don't love you. They don't love you. But, they, but it's a season of pleasure, a small moment of pleasure, but they don't love you. Don't deny the truth of, of what the world that you're living in. It, the world has no love for you. Why, is it, why does it hurt to live? Why do we find people who don't care about us, who do, who seek selfish life, selfish ways? Say far from the love of God, but yet we, we honor them, yet we give them awards. All these celebrities, they don't love you. They say, I love my fans. They don't love you. They would see you die and they wouldn't feel a Thing. They don't love you. They don't comfort you when you're broken. Their music may feel good, but they don't love you. They don't take care of you. God is not a feel good. God is one who will take care of you and heal you from the bottom to the top. All of it. Don't go. Don't, don't take half, but take the whole. Don't take a little. Don't take a scrap but take a full portion of love, of love and life. We, we, we let people cheat on us, lie to us, curse us. Don't ever curse me. Don't feel like you could tell me a curse. Don't feel like you could call me a name because God loves me. He's jealous for me. He would, he would, he would, you will not see a hair on my head hurt, but you want to hurt me. You hate me. For what? Why would I bow to you? Why would I give you the authority over me? There's no way because Jesus took away my sins. Jesus washed away my pain. Jesus washed away every tear from my eyes.